How's it going, everybody? Can y'all hear me? Oh, no sound. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I forgot to unmute my uh, my microphone. I have my air conditioning going, so hopefully y'all don't hear the uh, the AC. Um, but uh, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, hope everybody's doing okay. Yeah, had a had some issues with my um, uh, with my mod this week, so I had to kind of postpone the video a little bit. Um, but I get to do, this is something I had to do for a while. I'm modding this for, for someone in particular. So good opportunity to show you guys just how easy it is to mod a Lynx. Um, I'm not sure if everybody here is familiar with the Atari Lynx, but it's definitely a pretty cool console. So, all right. Good stuff, good stuff. All right. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah. Just want to make sure because yeah, the AC, I mean, it's kind of loud. I hear it and I can, I have my headphones on. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, so this is the, this is the model two. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab the model one so I can show you just how big the model one is. Hold on one second, guys. All right, sorry about that, but I do think it is kind of worth showing, you know, because this looks big. This is probably about maybe a little bit bigger than a Game Gear. Um, and let me make sure I'm reading the chat here. All right. Uh, I thought I saw someone ask about the uh, the caps. I believe the caps were al already replaced in this one, but we'll double check. So, because, um, yeah, definitely before you do a mod... You do want to replace the capacitors. It's always it's always a good idea. But yeah, so this is the Model 2. And this is the Model 1. This one is mine personally. And I this is kind of one of my sort of prized possessions because this one's a little bit special. So this is the Model 1. And it's, I mean, here, just to compare. I mean, you can see it's uh, quite a bit bigger. Actually, let me do that. Or longer, I should say. It's definitely. Here, let me uh, let me switch the cameras up here. Uh, here we go. So yeah, just to kind of give you an idea, model one on top, model two on the bottom. I mean, you could definitely. This is definitely a. A relic of the 80s you can kind of it has that sort of really cool 80s aesthetic I love it um, but yeah the cool thing about this one so this is a model one but it's a model one that uh, I think it's one of the earlier versions because it's actually and you can see it here if it comes in focus but this one's made in Japan so they actually made these in in Japan initially but then I believe they uh, they moved production to I want to say it was Taiwan after that um, but this is just cool because, you know, it's not, not super common to find, a, at least from what I understand, to find a Japanese one. Uh, and this is fully working as well. Um, and I don't remember if I recapped this or not because I've had this for a little while now. But, uh, but yeah, so pretty cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay, so would you mind telling me who did your scene transition? I don't know what that means, my scene transition. 
Oh, 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 it's, uh, oh yeah, I da uh, for the stream. Um, I downloaded it. I got it from, I think I got it from uh, Streamlabs. Because I, I use Streamlabs OBS, and I believe I got it from Streamlabs. I'm like 90% sure. I, I bought it. I think it was like five, five bucks or, or something. Um, I just thought it was kind of minimal and pretty cool, so. But, uh, but yeah, so, okay, all right. But yeah, so today we're going to be modding uh, the Model 2 because the Model 2 is definitely the easier one to modify. The The Model 1, very similar to the Sega Game Gear, has that ribbon cable that is directly soldered uh, to the motherboard. So you kind of got to peel it off or desolder it. And it's a big pain in the butt and it kind of stinks because it's that's not a reversible mod. And so I will not be ever modding this one. I'm going to be keeping this one completely original. Uh, but this one I will be modding because when you do mod it, it is reversible. So you can always kind of revert back to the original one. You have to, I think, there's this is almost a no solder mod. Um, it's I think you just need to remove a component, um, which again, you could just put back later on. But this is actually working. I put batteries in here. Um, now, the funny thing with the Atari Lynx, it, it won't turn on unless there's a game in there. So you got to put a game in. And here I got California, California Games, which is released on many consoles. And, uh, you know, we turn it on. There it goes. California Games. And the screen's actually pretty good. So really cool, um, but yeah, the the screen uses that s pretty much the same LCD technology as the Sega Game Gear. So uh, let me turn that down. Um, but yeah, um, actually another thing that I have that's also kind of interesting about the links are are the game cards. I guess you what you would call them. So they're very flat. I mean, you know. And this, and you can tell which are early versions and which ones aren't. So this is an early version of the card because as you can see, it is completely flat. Um, there's nothing, it's really difficult. So these original ones are actually very difficult to pull out because there's nothing to kind of grip on. Um, I mean, well, that, that was easy, but, uh, but then what they did is they then, I'll try to show them all here. Uh, so you have this one. And then they, I think, I believe this was kind of the next evolution. So they added these tabs, which kind of stick out so you can kind of easily get a good grip on them. So that's sort of like the second generation Atari Lynx uh, cartridges or cards. And then I believe the final form were these, which had a, it's kind of angled at the top. Let's see here. So you can kind of see it's got that lip. Um, and so that's the final form, I believe. So, pretty interesting. Um, they kind of changed the, the way the cartridges looked um, over time. Made, you know, made them better, easier to remove. So, all right. Um, but yeah, so today, very easy mod. We'll be installing the Benven uh, Lynx Rev 6B aftermarket uh, LCD screen which is obviously going to be way, way better than the uh, kind of passive LCD screen that's on there. So, um, yeah. hey, uh, Phenonymous is asking, Subtito, would resin flux paste work for the DC? Absolutely. Yeah, you could use uh, resin flux paste. Um, I, I like using the no clean stuff, but the actual... Um, uh, Resin flux paste might be a little bit better, maybe. Um, it might wet the uh, solder a little bit better. Uh, actually, what's also really good, and I don't know if you want to try this, but every once in a while, if I'm really having trouble soldering something, I'll use this stuff. Uh, you don't really see me use it in videos because I get away you know, pretty good using the no clean stuff, which I really like. It's like MG chemical, but this Amtec um, flux is, is really, really good. 
Um, and this is, let's see here, it's called just a tacky flux. But, uh, but yeah, uh, so wait, re uh, resin flux paste. I'm trying to, uh, I was thinking rosin. Were you thinking, is it rosin? I'm not sure what resin flux paste is. I, um, not, is that what you mean, phenonymous? I believe that's what it's called. Like rosin core solder. Yeah, yeah. Ro no, no, no problem, man. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a, it, that'll work. And really any flux, as long as you're using flux, um, like good quality stuff, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I hope that answered your question. Um, all right, so... Ah, uh, Miles Cooley asks, when will we hear more about the Thick Boy SP? It's a great question. A lot of people keep asking about it, and I feel really, really bad. So that that project is, you know, uh, Helder is working on that. Um, Kyle was working on that as well. And uh, we actually, uh, another person was helping with that to really finalize the design of the shell. So it's, you know, we are working on it, but it's... Um, it's sort of been on the back burner because everybody, you know, this is sort, it was sort of like a passion project. So everybody's got, you know, stuff going on and it just kind of was sitting on the back burner. We haven't forgot about it. Um, as far as I know, it's still happening. So uh, I know a lot of people are super interested in it. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I hopefully will be making an announcement about it soon. Um, cause the big thing we really wanted to do was get a, um, uh, injection molded plastic shells you know because they're just a little bit higher quality uh so yeah hopefully um you know we'll uh we'll actually get that out at some point because i do think it's pretty cool and a lot of people do seem to be interested in it um boo, 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 boo. cool all right so sorry um so like i said this is the rev b Benven, I believe that 6B, sorry, Rev 6B. I believe this is the latest one. He might actually, oh no, I think he has a newer IPS kit out as well. Um, so maybe this is a little bit dated, but I, I think I tried to get the IPS kit, but it was sold out. Um, but and the nice thing is it comes like kind of already pre-mounted onto uh, this panel. I believe this is a TFT, but still you're going to get really excellent results with this. Um, but yeah, and yeah, so and the other great thing is it's almost plug and play. Uh, this is the f custom flex cable that comes with it to connect it to the uh, motherboard. And uh, I'm not sure why, but um, I don't know if you all can see that. Let me see if I, I don't know if it'll be able to focus this close, but the, uh, eh, I guess not, but the text on this is backwards. I'm not sure if that was done on purpose or not, um, but I don't know if you can see that lettering, but it's um, it's like mirrored for whatever reason. I don't know if you all know what, uh, what that's about, but uh, I thought that was interesting. I was just kind of looking at it. Um, oh, is Ben Ven? Ah, oh, Ben Ven, hey! Oh yeah, uh, so Benven is in the chat. Benven said, hey Tito, we're, uh, we've just released our new IPS Lynx kit revision with, oh, with VGA out, more scan line options, and of course, a crisp custom design IPS panel. Not, oh, custom, I'll have to check that out. Um, hey, uh, yeah, actually, I, so we'll definitely be chatting with uh, Ben while we're installing this. You know, he'll probably make sure I'm installing it correctly, so that's good. So uh, Hector, thank you so much. Um, Hector Santana says, have a recommended, uh, oh, a recommended magnifier or digital microscope. Um, so actually what, I, I don't have, so I don't actually use a, uh, oh, actually, no, I do. Hold on, let me, uh, let me show you what I got. So a lot of the times when I do really fine soldering, and even while I'm recording it, I use this. It's really inexpensive. Uh, actually, here. Um, so this is, and I'll put it on for you. It looks really goofy, 
but uh, but this kind of allows you to see like whenever I do the um, uh, like soldering to a chip with like one of those flex ribbon cables, I use this. And, and sometimes you'll notice in those shots like there's an odd light, like the color temperature of the light changed a little bit, and that's because this has a a built-in LED, and it's kind of bluish. So when you see that in my in my footage, it's because I'm using this so I can see things better. Um, but I don't have an electric microscope. What I do have is a macro lens on my uh, on my camera, and so this comes with a set of lenses of different magnifications. I always just use this one, which is the highest magnification, because um, the other ones are kind of pointless. They, they, you know, they don't magnify too much. So yeah, here I put this one on. Let me. Ugh. So this will look really goofy, but yeah. So, so this is what I. And then I you got the light right here, and you can just really see really well um, everything, and it does a really good job. And uh, and then when, you know, you can just kind of move them out of the way and you can kind of see normally. So, um, but you know, this is great. This is really cheap. I got this on Amazon. Um, it's called, uh, I'll show it to you again, but, uh, but yeah, they do kind of look like the Google glass. I remember I thought that was the coolest thing and I really wanted one back in the day. It's not really that back in the day. It was like 2016 or something. But yeah, so Hector, these are called the, so this is the the name from Amazon. I don't know if that'll show up. It's the Yacht, Yacht to Sun Head Mount or something. So, um, oh, hey, thanks for the sub. Uh, bedtime Bear, Bedtime Bear. So yeah. So I don't know, Hector, that's kind of what I use, uh, but uh, um, I, I do kind of maybe at some point want to get like an electro electric uh, or electronic microscope that would be useful. Uh, I do have a, a macro lens, so I get that, that's to get those really close in shots. And sometimes I'll use that because I do have a monitor. But um, but anyway, so good question. Good question. Um, let's see here. Oh, hey, Todd. Ah. Todd uh, Covelli is also in the chat, and it's fun. so actually, and I, I'm gonna post this soon on like you know Twitter and like my my YouTube channel. But uh, I was actually recently on TV, um, uh, on the list, so it, which was really cool. And I was and Todd, you know, he works for the um, the television network uh, that I was on, and uh, it was really fun working with him. And we talked about the Game Boy, so. I'll make sure to um, to make a post about that because it was a lot of fun and I don't know I, uh, I think you guys might find it interesting. It's kind of meant more meant for like the Game Boy novice and I'm sure most of you guys are Game Boy pros. So, um, but anyway, yeah. So uh, Todd said Tito that looks very ambitious. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is um, very interesting. A very niche console, uh, not super niche, but uh, you know, not super well known. Obviously, from this generation, you had the Game Boy and the Game Gear, and I would say this was probably even more po more popular than the Turbo Express. Um, and the Turbo Express was probably maybe the least, at least here in North America. You know, those were the ones we got. I think from so we had Game Boy, Game Gear, uh, Game Boy, Game Gear, the Lynx, Turbo Express. Did we have anything else? during that time period, and as far as handheld, um, those might have been the big four, but, uh, um, but yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, no, Todd, thank you. No, I had a, that was a very fun. I, um, can't wait to show everybody. I think they'll all really like it, too. Um, cool. Yeah, Link Slash, Oh, really? Okay, I didn't realize. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, there was Tiger, of course. Uh, you know, it's yeah, the, the Tiger games, which they did have an LCD, but they didn't have swappable cartridges, and it was like one game, and the games were... It was like a game and watch, essentially. Um, but, yeah, so... 
Um, yeah, Scruffy. Very, very handy. Uh, I use it uh, all the time. Um, been looking into those digital microscopes. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm trying to find like a good one that I could like maybe plug in um, to like my external monitor or something. That would be ideal. I know that some of them come with a monitor, but sometimes they're not like the best. But um, so one that has like a good HDMI out. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. So Neo Geo Pocket. That was probably still considered that generation because I think that came out closer to like mid 90s around when like the Game Boy Pocket came out. I mean, like 96 or something. When did that come out? Uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color. Um, and then I promise we're going to get into modding here because uh, I got to make definitely get this done. So Neo Geo Pocket Color came out in, uh, oh, actually, really late, 19, 19, oh, that's the color. When did the original Neo Geo Pocket come out? Uh, 1998. And the color came out a year later, 1999. So, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I guess it would be because, yeah, Game Boy Color came out around that time as well. Um, but yeah. Okie dokie. Though, oh yeah, but did, did we get the Watara supervision in the U.S.? I'm not sure if we got that here in the, I mean, maybe we did. I, I've, I've never heard of it until I saw it on, um, on the Retro Future when Elliot brought it on, like, you know, several years ago. Um, so it's kind of like a Game Boy, very similar to like the DMG. Yeah. I'm not even, I wonder what country that's from too. But, um, but yeah, cool. So, well, let's get on with modding this. So the kit, now I got the kit uh, from Atari Gamer and Atari Gamer actually designed this, um, 3D printed bracket, which is going to make installation a breeze, and uh, and and actually, if Benven is still watching, it, do do you still sell these on your website as well? Because I actually had to buy these from Atari Gamer because that's the only place I could find them. Um, but yeah, so Atari Game. Oh yeah, Atari Gamer is also in chat. Hey, uh, just tuning in before I have to start my day job. Hey, great. So, um, but yeah. So yeah, this 3D printed bracket came from Atari Gamer, and it's also where I bought the kit. But the kit is a Benven kit, but the 3D printed uh, adapter is from Atari Gamer. Very incredible resource, Atari Gamer, his website. He's also got a good Facebook, I think it's Facebook group. Um, so yeah, definitely check that. If you're into the links or want to learn more about it, check out Atari Gamer on his website. Um, and... Uh, if you're interested in mods, not just for the Atari Lynx, check out Benven because he's got uh, Benven is probably my first like no, well maybe not my first, but the, my first color backlit mod was a Benven kit way way back in the day. Um, he was kind of like the early pioneer and sort of I feel like kind of jump started this whole phenomenon and uh and look where we are today it's incredible so big thanks to benven and all of this stuff um all right so yeah 3d printed bracket we got the screen with the driver board already pre-mounted on the back and then we got the uh, ribbon cable adapter it's just a very simple kit three parts that's it um and now let's get into the let's zoom in a little bit let's get into turn up the brightness the links so batteries on this model go in on the bottom like this it takes six double a's very much like the game gear uh, hold on a second let me get a spudger Oh, hey, and okay, so we now we have a uh, spam or a spammer. How do I block block? Uh, I'm going to report up. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm just reporting this person right now. 
Just uh, bear with me for a moment. Uh, oops. Okay, sorry, I just wanna make sure I... And there we go, okay. Sorry about that. Back to it. All right, so uh, I'm gonna check out the batteries. It's got six, just like the Game Gear, just like the Turbo Express. Um, probably lasted about the same amount of time too. I don't think it was any more efficient or anything. So we got the batteries out and um, I took the battery cover off. And now you may be wondering, well, Tito, where, where are the screws? There's no screws on this thing, but we do have screws and they are below the grips. So um, let's go ahead and they just kind of peel off. They have an adhesive on them. So when you store them, make sure you store them with the adhesive facing up because you don't want dirt or grime getting on the getting on it, and it'll just kind of um, it won't it'll lose its stickiness essentially. If dust gets on it, um, so it comes off pretty cleanly. Let me zoom in some more. So we got four screws. So just one, two, three, four. They're pretty big Phillips screws. Um, but yeah, right here and here, so let's go ahead and remove them. So, um, I'm not sure if everybody heard, but Ben Ben says he has a brand new kit and I, I hope to not be misspeaking, but it sounds like he has a custom IPS screen. Um, I don't know if it was if he designed it or, um, or 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 maybe it just has specs that perfectly match his needs. But yeah, um, that'd be definitely something very cool to check out. And Benven is from Australia, I believe. And Atari Gamer, yeah, I think is from the UK. But yeah, okay, so we got those screws out, and then you just got to get like a little spudger and just kind of you know there we go okay and then this just comes right out there we go so that's that's the back of the motherboard pretty simple nice thing about the um i think a lot of it uses through hole components okay so uh, and then there's nothing, this is just kind of floating here. So nothing's really holding this. So the next thing we need to do is sort of take out this battery uh, kind of caddy, this little battery holder. So you just kind of got to like lift it a little bit, lift the motherboard out a little bit. And let's see here. Now, the, actually the one thing I'm a little nervous about, and I didn't check it and I was actually reading about this. Uh, oh, oh. Okay, guys, sorry. I forgot one screw. There's a screw right here we got to remove. So let's take that out. Um, so apparently there's one revision of the Atari Lynx Model 2 that uh, it still works with the kit that I have, but I think there, it, you know, um, it's not, I think when you like maybe first turn on the console, it's sort of, um, you get like a glitchy screen or something, but then as soon as you start playing the game, it works fine. But they fixed that because they have a kit specific uh, for it. So uh, thanks Atari Gamer. I, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later, man. All right, so yeah, so I need to make sure that this is the right kit. I think it is, but because I think that it's pretty uncommon to have that one variation of, the, of that, uh, that motherboard, because apparently that Model 2 motherboard uses um, I think the Model 1 chip set or something. So um, it's just a little bit different. 
Okay, so now we're gonna lift this out slightly and then very gently sort of take this out. Um, you you kind of gotta like finagle it just a little bit. And be careful because there are two ribbons connecting the motherboard to the front shell. Um, and there we go, it just pops out. All right, so that's the battery caddy. Comes right out, held on with just one screw. Okay, so next, um, we just need to start unplugging some of the cables. And the way we do that is you kind of got to, I think, come in from the top. And it's going to be hard for me to like show and do it at the same time, but I'll do my best. Get my spudger here. So I don't know if you all can see that. Okay, so here we got, you got one cable here. I believe that's the power to bat the backlight. This, this one right uh, here is for the speaker and these two ribbon cables. Um, the, this one here on the left is for the LCD and this one here on the right are for the front button controls. So your D-pad, your action buttons, etc. cetera. Ah, uh, yeah, so Benven says if the mother has a C104-129-001, that's the old revision that needs the Lynx 1 kit. Okay, so fingers crossed that's not what we have. I'm gonna have one heck of a time doing this, so let's let's see if we can do this. Oh, okay, there we go. We got one, two. So right now I'm just lifting the bales on these connectors. Okay. And I'm gonna see if I can just pull them out. Hey, uh, thank you for the sub. The Google, or the Goggle Hero. Sorry, the Goggle Hero, not Google. All right, so I'm just kind of wiggling these ribbon cables out. Very challenging to do while trying to show it on camera. Um, it is a bit awkward placement. Um, actually, let me grab some tweezers. Hold on one second. I generally don't like to use uh, tweezers on ribbon cables just because, you know, they're pretty delicate. Um, you can, not, nothing wrong with it. It's just, you gotta be very careful because you don't want to really damage that ribbon. Um, there we go. Okay, so we almost got one out. Holy Toledo, that's gonna be a pain in the butt. All right, so this is the button control ribbon is out. And next is the LCD. All right, guys, I'm just gonna try and do this real quick off camera just cause it'll be so much easier. I'm just basically pulling out a cable. There we go. Ugh, much easier. Okay. So. Two cables are out. Now I could just unplug the speaker, which is this one right here. And then the um, power to the backlight, I believe that's what that's for. Yeah, and these caps look like they've been replaced. So, so we're good. Looks like the previous owner are circled here for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of work here and we're gonna remove the old screen and then we're gonna install the new one. Ah, so uh, Coslo27 is asking, IPS use more battery? I don't, honestly, I'm gonna probably say, ah, okay, so Ben Ben's answering. Anything prior to, um, oh, let me see. Yeah, no, this one doesn't say IPS on it.
Cool. All right. So in order to remove, okay, so we got, oh, that stinks. So it looks like we're missing a screw here. There should be, I believe, let me, let me look at the instructions. I got the instructions up here. Um, oh no, never mind. No, we're good. Okay, so there is not supposed to be a screw there. I thought there was, um, but I'm looking at the images and it looks like it is just, actually, Ben, can you, is there a screw supposed to be here? Ben? In the instructions on the Atari Gamer website, it doesn't look like there is a screw there, but for some reason it looks like, do you know, there sh oh, there should be a screw there. Okay. There should be a screw here, guys. Well, it's interesting. I was maybe, I guess in the Atari Gamer instruction manual, it looks like that they, he didn't put one there, which is fine. I mean, or maybe he, in the picture he took, he didn't put it in there, but anyway, okay. So guys, there is supposed to be a screw here. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this. You see, there's a screw right here. And then we got one more right there. Okay, and so this should just come right out. Okay, there it is, guys. That just pops right out. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, hold on to this and keep this. I'm gonna send it back to the uh, person that I'm doing this mod for. And uh, you yeah, know, cause you can always just put it right back. So, cool, that was easy. Um, now this gasket, there's a gasket on here, um, uh, which is, is permanently, oh, no, 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 it's not. Oh, no, yeah, it is. Um, so, uh, actually that's another question. It doesn't, I don't think it says it in the instructions, but, um, hmm. So Ben, this, this, um, this gasket, I can't transfer this gasket to your new screen, right? Because it, it seems like it's pretty much fixed on there. Um, and, and yeah, I don't see... And the instructions, he doesn't transfer it over, so... Um, oh, yeah, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it on the original one. Uh, ben says that, that, I mean, due to the age, they probably, you know, um, have deteriorated. And if I just pull it off, it'll melt in my hands. So I'm gonna set that aside. And that comes off with the ribbon cable right there. Okay. And before I put um, the screen on, let me show you a little tip that I usually do. Hold on one second. Okay, so I have this, uh, you know, this like kind of blows air and I just use that to kind of get dust off, like the big chunks of dust off. Um, whenever, before I ever put a monitor, a screen, um, like an aftermarket screen somewhere, just to get the big chunks of dust. And then I come in, I use these uh, Kim wipes cause these are, you know, lint free. So they don't scratch. People use these for their, the lens on, for their cameras. Um, I just come in and I use this, um, it's like kind of a lens cleaner. Just spray a little bit. And it's very gently kind of like, I try to pick up the big pieces of dust because you don't, you don't want to move around dust particles or debris that's on here because you could scratch the interior of it. So I try to pick it up and then I'll fold it, get a new area and then I'll spray some more and then I'll kind of come in very gently, try to clean the lens. Um, and that should be good enough. And I'm gonna kind of clean the area around it as well. Since I'm here.
come in again. And I'm just gonna kind of inspect it, see how it looks. It looks pretty good. Hold on a second. Let me. It's kind of the interesting thing. It's, you know, the lens kind of, there's like a groove for the bezel. And I feel like dust kind of gets in there. I'm gonna see if I can remove any of it before I put the screen in. It's kind of hard to get unless you pop the screen off. Oh, I think these do pop off. Oh yeah, I think these do pop off. Well, I don't want to break. I don't want to break the tab, so I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna try. But let's give that a clean. second. That's pretty good. Okay. So now the way we put the bracket on the screen is, okay, so first what we do, let's see here, place a new LCD. Oops. And position the Atari Grand bracket, da, da, da. Okay, yeah, so basically what we're gonna do is Make sure there's no dust. Peel the protective film. Very carefully drop the screen in like so. Kind of like that. And then just right on top, we're gonna kind of shimmy this a little bit until everything just kind of fits in place. It doesn't feel right. Hold on a second. It feels like it's got to move a little to the left. Doesn't seem like it's going on straight. So the bracket's on. Oh, it could be straight and maybe the, um... yeah, oh yeah, that's straight. Yeah, it's just the, uh... so I was kind of using the driver board as a reference, uh, but the driver board isn't perfectly aligned with the, uh... so it's just a little, it looks a little crooked, so it's fine. So that's good. And now we can just mount it in place. Oop. Okay, let's go like side to side. Well, let's see here. Okay. And then I just have the one screw left, which kind of stinks that one is missing. But then, okay, so I kind of gently tied them down and I'm gonna slowly uh, secure it all the way, kind of putting even pressure as it's mounted. 
Okay, and there we go. That thing is solid, not going anywhere. Um, that's what it looks like. That's the new screen. Oops, got some dust on there. But I mean, the screen's a little scratched, but you know, these things are old and, um, but not bad, not bad, okay. So that's pretty good. Now, the one thing I forgot to do was check to make sure the motherboard we have is compatible. Got a little bit of rust here. Can I see if I can clean that off? Probably not, but Okay, so here it says, is that, I guess, the number I'm looking for? You know, it's funny. I actually just ordered a Poly watch like two days ago. Um, I've never used it before, but I do have a watch that has like an acrylic uh, lens. And I just ordered Poly watch. Oh, geez. Not, not again. Not again. I definitely need to get a uh, person to help me with. Um... Uh, let's see here. How do I block? Oops. Okay. Hopefully, I'm not blocking the wrong person. Uh, click them. Make sure I clicked on the right comment. Yeah. Report. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Hey, Aeolus Maximus, thank you for the five dollars for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Let's see here. Uh, all right. Report. Okay. I think I... Did I get them all? I think I got them all. Oh, no. Missed one. Man. Okay. Okay. I think I got them all now. Oh, okay. All right. So... Um, yeah, so I think this is compatible because this is a C right there. You can see the model. Uh, C10447-1-001. And the model that this kit is not compatible with is the, or it is compatible. It just doesn't work perfectly. It's a C... Uh, 10 41 29 dash 001 so so we're good okay so now what the instruction instructions call for next is to actually install the ribbon cable and the way you're gonna do that is they have it oriented like this and it's going this way so okay so basically I'm going to stick this into the LCD connector like so and this is nice because we can just go ahead and very easily connect this in is that oh okay nope didn't that that did not connect hold on a second let's make sure we get that in there Oh, oh gosh. So the, uh, this little connector came off, but don't worry, that can probably just go right back in. And honestly, you know, it doesn't even need to go in perfectly. 
because all, all we're worried about is this part here, because that's what puts pressure on the pins. But we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put that back in there. Yeah, so that's pretty much in there. I'm guessing the previous owner really yanked on it and it kinda, there we go, ah. Oh. Yeah, so you really gotta put some force and force that in there. And then we're gonna lock it down and we are fully engaged. Okay. Oh, well, this one came out too. I just wanted to see if that one came out, but it does. Okay. All right, so now let's put the two together. Let me zoom out a little bit for you. Um, oh, ah, guys, ho <laughs> ho. Uh, before we could even do that, I'm getting ahead of myself. We got to remove a component on the on the motherboard, and we got to remove the L17 coil, which I believe is this guy right here. Let's double check. Um, you see that? There it goes. Is that it right there? That's L15. I want to make sure. Let me. Uh, guys, how do we block? Is this a different person? How do I oh, hide user from the channel? Maybe that's it. Okay. All right. I think I got it. Yeah, I, before I was reporting and it was removing. Oh, is it another user? Oh, these guys. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. L17. Um, I think that's... So that's capacitor, capacitor... The silk screening is kind of, it's, there's a lot of components in this little area and it's hard to see the silk screening below. Um, oh yeah, L17. Okay, so that is L17. It says it right, you guys aren't, you guys aren't gonna be able to see that. It's right there, it says it, but okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to heat up my desoldering gun. Hold on a second. Got to plug it in. Okay. All right. Oh, you know, oh no, good. So the nice thing is thankfully it's not underneath this like copper shielding. It's just uh, right here. So it's all exposed. And that's another nice thing about the links. It uses a lot of through hole components. Um, so I do believe it is gonna be these two pins right here. Turn on the iron. I'm gonna also turn on my fume extractor, guys. Safety first, okay? Gotta, gotta use that fume extractor. If you're gonna be doing a lot of soldering, I highly recommend getting a, uh, a fume extractor, but. Um, Hmm. Oh, uh, Phenonymous saying, is that a resettable fuse mod? I, I don't know. Is there, uh, where's the fuse? Cause yeah, the re resettable fuses, I think they reset when you turn power off. Is that correct? I think that's right. The orange one. Oh, this. Um, so this looks like that's been here. I think, I think this has been here because the solder looks old. 
like it's kind of uh, tarnished as opposed to the caps which have shinier solder which makes me believe that this was recapped um, but this yeah no that it looks like it came like that I think um, All right. All right, so I think my iron is good and hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just desolder that. Actually, what I'll do, eh, no, never mind. And sometimes it helps to put just a little bit of flux down. So I'm gonna put a little bit of no clean. And let me just double check here, make sure, yeah, so that's the right one. Didn't even turn on my, uh, my fume extractor, there we go. Okay, that should do it. And this bad boy should just kind of wiggle right off. And then, let me see if I can show it. And so that'll just, oop, boop, right out. So yeah, guys, that's another, th I mean, it always helps to have the right tools. So, I mean, if you can't get a, um, a solder sucker like that one one that i highly recommend that works actually i should have used it for this but um i used this a lot before um this solder sucker again you could you can just get this on amazon it, it's pricey for what it is but dude it's like all metal machined um metal like this is a good this is like probably of manual solder suckers this is like a really good one um because you know the hacko yeah the hacko is really really expensive but I do a lot of, you know, a lot of these projects. So for me, it's kind of worth it. Um, but if you do plan on modding a lot in the future, I just turned my um, uh, fume extractor off. Then it, it does, it's, it's a worthy investment for sure. And it's more than paid for itself. So, um, all right. So guys, we removed the L17 coil, which is good. And I'm going to also leave that with the... Uh, give that back to the original owner because you know you can just pop it right back in and put the old screen back in and you're back to the factory condition so um okay well i think that's it guys uh I th let me let me double check the instructions yeah totally philip uh it's it's a godsend the the hacko what model is this? This is the Hacko FR301. Love it. Love it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, Mio, Mio, Meow, Meow Stick says, uh, you know, this is great, but you can use solder, solder braid. It's uh, it's like a good alternative. Makes I mean, it's, you get, it's a little bit more challenging, but it's a good skill to have to use, um, know how to use solder wick. But let's make sure I did everything. Okay, so um, first thing is you disassemble, remove the old screen. Next, the L17 coil needs to be removed from the Atari Lynx. You can do that da -da -da, with some cutters if you want. Um, da -da -do, perfect. You can now plug the ribbon cable into the motherboard, which we just did. We did that already. That's right here, already installed. Um, be sure to push it firmly until it clicks into place. Then lock the socket by pushing down on its size, sides. Um, it should not be possible to pull the ribbon out. Blah, blah, blah. Yep, reconnect the cable for the buttons. We're gonna do that in a second. Da, 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 da. Just make sure, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, honestly, guys, the, we're, we're pretty much done here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to plug in the this ribbon, which is for the buttons. Let 
And we're gonna make sure that's all the way in. And then we're gonna lock the bales. Okay. That is locked and ready to rock. And then I think um, I'm gonna plug in the speaker, which maybe I should have done that first. Again, guys, I might have to do this off camera just because it's uh, hard to, or, you know, maybe do it like this. Oh, you know what? Hold on a second, guys. I got to maneuver this a little bit over a large peg. This peg right here. Okay. And then let me plug it in. Okay, so now I just, the speaker's plugged in. And uh, so the speaker's plugged in. I still haven't plugged in the LCD. I will do that in a moment. I'll show you what that looks like because it's gonna be hard to get that on camera. But you just lift the bale. Oh, whoa. Oh, I didn't even realize this, but oh, so cool. Let me see if I can show you this. So Ben Ven installed this little tab here that you can hold which helps because it's kind of hard to grip it, but this little tab, you see this like little long tab hanging out of the ribbon? That's to sort of guide, help you guide the ribbon into the connector. Oh, that's really cool, very clever. Good job, Ben. Very cool, actually, let me, let me make sure this is kind of positioned right. Okay, yeah. Make sure. Cause yeah, it, guys, this is a little tricky. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it just right. So actually let me zoom out for y'all. Kind of see what I'm doing. There we go. Now it's hard to tell if it's all the way. I think it's all the way in. Well, we'll find out when I put it together, but okay. So um, that's what it looks like. Oop, let me zoom in. So that's what it looks like when it's connected. Um, you can see it connected to the driver board right there. Again, that long tab really kind of helped position it. Um, but now we're gonna um, sort of button it all back together. Um, make sure we put this back in. I'm not gonna screw things down just because, you know, just to make sure, cause it's kind of a pain in the butt to screw, unscrew. So I'm putting the battery compartment back in. Sorry about that, didn't show it, but. All right, so the battery compartment's back in. This is pretty much in as well. And you know what, I am gonna screw it together. Um, since there aren't really that many screws anyway. Okay, so that's in. And actually I'll just put like two screws in. Okay, 
There we go. Actually, maybe I don't need to put screws. Let's put the batteries in. So the batteries are a little bit, I mean, not super tricky, but they're the way I do it is I kind of put one back, put one forward, and then I do the same on this side, but making sure I have them aimed correctly. And this, uh, and then you leave the middle ones, put that there, and put that there. Well, then let's put a game Put the cyber ball in. Oh, power turned on. Let's see. Six. Oh, wow, dude, that looks good. Success. Okay, all right, I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna put it all together now. And since the screws really don't get in the way, I can just probably do it like this. Guys, that was, I mean, that was pretty simple, right? I thought that was pretty simple. It, it uh, so really the only, the only soldering that was required was desoldering the, um, uh, that coil. Only four screws holding this thing together. There's less screws holding this together than a Game Boy. Kind of crazy. And then all we do is we put the grips back on. They just stick right there. And guys, oh, wait, hold on. I also gotta put on the, oh, I gotta put on this. Boom. How does that look? Oh, there we go. I turn on? Huh. Did the game come out? Huh, that's weird. Okay, now it turn it's not turning on. What's going on here? Hmm. Well, that's really tight. Well, that's weird, guys. It's never, it's never just an easy thing, is it? So what changed? Okay, well, I screwed everything together. That changed. Take the batteries out and see if, uh, what's going on here? Yeah, no, the cart, the cart was in. Stay on, oh, oh, maybe, yeah. Ugh, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, I screwed. I think I screwed it securely. Never a dull moment. Well, the weird thing is I put it together. I just screwed it together. So nothing should have moved around. That's odd. That's really odd. Oops. So let's, uh, I mean, did do you think the screen came dislodged? No, this, that can't be. This is all very secure and I can see I can see that the, um, oh yeah, the cable is still connected. Hold on a second. Let's try something. That's in there solid, right? The battery. Putting it back together.
We'll still say this shell doesn't really. I feel like it doesn't close super easily. Like on the bottom, especially. Is it aligned? Yeah, it's all aligned. Okay. That's all good. Let's screw it down again. Okay. Wonder maybe if like the batteries shifted or something. Maybe they weren't making a good, maybe that's what it was. Let's see. Let's put the game in. Make sure we put the batteries in correct. Okay. I mean, it's working. That's really weird. Why did it do that? do that that's so weird well it's working I, I will say the the you know this is really tight when I put it on like really tight I, I wonder if it like moved one of the batteries maybe the battery wasn't making like a good contact maybe it's like really tight when I put it on like let's see let's see if we yeah that is so tight I feel like that's like messing with something wow that is really tight yeah, see? Now it's not turning on. I think this is like... And then let's see if it turns on. And now it turns on. What the heck is going on here? Well, let's make sure the... Okay, let's make sure everything works on this. Oh yeah, I get sound. So sound works. All the controls work. Yeah, guys, I mean, this works great. And let's see the uh, brightness control. Yeah, and the brightness control works. Hmm. I feel like this, this foam block right here is, like, too thick. Actually, is Ben? Ben. Uh, battery cover. Hey, Ben, have you? Oh, let me see. Uh, Macho. There is also, oh, the scan. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, I gotta, well, guys, we gotta do that. We gotta put the, um, there's a scan, a scan line wire you can solder to enable them. Hmm, okay. Well, let's do that. Um, hey, Ben, is there a, um, is it, uh, cause I didn't see where that scan line uh, wire goes. Um, on the, on the uh, oh, let's see. So it's a wire that runs from the brightness pad on the PCB, okay, to a pad on the motherboard where you press, uh, ooh, okay, yeah, let's, let's do that guys um, because yeah, so that wasn't in the instructions on on the Atari page, Atari Gamer page. Um, okay, so guys, I lied. There's a little bit of soldering, but it, it's not necessary. But you get an added scan line feature. So let's make sure we do that. Oh yeah, yeah. Find a pic and and post it uh, on like Discord or something, and I can. Or can you put a picture here? Maybe you can put a picture in the chat. That'd be fantastic. Now, the one thing guys, I was gonna show at the end, but I kinda, you know, maybe while we're waiting. So the cool thing with, well, and, I, and I'm hesi 
hesitant to say all this, but the cool thing about the Lynx is it's, although I think recently it's been getting expensive, but I bought a bunch of games for it like a while ago, boxed. Now uh, this one's open, but these are sealed. And I think these were like 15, 15 or 20 bucks or something. Um, and I'm like debating whether or not I want to open them or not, but it's just kind of cool. And plus, I love Bill and Ted. So I think maybe I'll just keep this definitely sealed. And then Toki. Toki is like a classic Lynx game. Um, but yeah. And then Chips. Chips is actually kind of a fun game. But yeah. Um, this is so cool. So I, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to like artificially inflate the prices, but you can still buy boxed sealed Atari Lynx games. It's so, I mean, they're, they're so cool. Look at them. But yeah, anyway. Um, so I, you know, I do have a flash cart. I have, actually have Ben Ben's flash cart, but it died on me. I don't know. I think I, I probably messed something up. I, I, I forget why I did it, but it, it, um, actually let's, well, I don't, I'll, I'll try it on mine. Cause I don't want to mess this one up. Um, but I do. So this is the, uh, Ben Ben makes great flash carts here. So, uh, this is, it's not focusing, but it says Ben Ben right there. Uh, I'm not this, um, this is like a really interesting, like, I don't know if it's 3D print or what, but, um, but yeah. Oh yeah, so let me, I got distracted. Let's install the scanline wire. Mm. Thank you, uh, Phenonymous, <clears throat> for the Encore bonus content. Yes. So the bonus content of uh, we are going to be putting in uh, just just a one wire, you know, one one single wire. But uh, but thank you so much, Phenonymous. Appreciate it. All right, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put that in. Oh, okay, so Ben Ven tagged me on Discord. I'm going to go take a look at that. Let me just take this apart real quick. Ooh, it's getting warm in here. Sorry guys, gonna turn the temp down a little bit. Okay. Then we got the one extra screw right down here in the battery compartment. Just gonna lift this out gently. Take that out. Okay, and then I'm gonna uh, remove the cables, okay. That's the LCD, took that out. And then we're gonna unplug all this stuff. Okay, so we have, uh, so Ben um, was very kind and he sent me a picture of uh, what connection we need to make. So let's go check that out. Uh, 
Oh, it's a video. Just uh, watching it real quick. Installing the solderless revision 5 PCB into your Lynx is very easy. We recommend you start by inserting the ribbon into the motherboard. It's a video within a video. Video inception. Okay, so let's see. And then shut the gate. You will need to remove the inductor, which I already have on the, on the backlight wire. If you want to install it, you don't need to. But to get backlight control, you put a, a wire from this point here, same as our last kit, and solder that to the backlight pad here. Once the screen's uh, tied down with the bracket, you open up this gate here and slide with the gold fingers down into that socket there. You can see there. Once the screen's uh, tied down, you can bend it off or cut it. Line up easy. We Wait, Ben, I must have missed it. Was it a... Um, so the gold fingers uh, facing away. Line it up with the gate open. This person again. Okay. Hey, so Ben, I was looking at the video. Oh, 40 seconds. Okay, because I thought it said backlight control. To get backlight control. I guess that I guess you mean uh, that means scan lines. Um. So is that the fourth pin? Uh, oh, it's okay. Is that the fourth pin uh, from the left on the top row? That's what it looks like. I can't zoom in on my on the video. It's uh yeah four okay so all right cool fourth pin okay so guys we're gonna solder a wire. It's in in this group of pins. It's on the top row, fourth pin from the left. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me get uh, let me get some wire. Hold on a second. Hey Ben, can I use a uh, thirty AWG or like thirty gauge wire? Is that too thin? Or oh, that that'll be okay. Okay, cool. So just cut me some length of wire. Turn on my iron. And on the screen, we're connecting it to the pad labeled backlight, which I believe is this pad right here. Is that right, Ben? I think that's right. It's just the backlight pad. All right, sweet, we're in business. All right, so let me go ahead and trim this. <clears throat> All right, fume extractor on. <clears throat> Sorry guys, that's as far as I can go in, but let me get that in the middle.
One, two, three, four. So I'm just tinning the pad a little bit. I'm gonna tin the wire. Okay. Okay, there we go, guys. Easy peasy. One wire. Okay, it's on the fourth pin from the left. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then we will solder it to, um, this is probably more wire than I need. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll cut it a little bit more. It's good to have a little bit, there's so much room inside this console so you can have excess wire. Um, shouldn't be a big deal. But we're gonna tin that pad right there. That's it guys. Scan lines have been activated. Okay. Um, so now let's put this back together for real. Um, So now what I'm doing is just connecting all the cables, just a few. Um, so there's this big peg right here, okay. All right, so what we need to do is connect the speaker, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, speaker is connected. And then the, of course, uh, the LCD, but you now it's kind of a, also a bit of a pain, but um, thankfully, Ben, that was genius what you did with the, uh, the ribbon design, that little kind of handle, genius. Install that at a bit of an angle. Okay, there we go. I think I got it. So one thing, so this is what it looks like, guys. Um, so one thing you gotta be aware of is when you install that ribbon cable, you just wanna make sure it is completely uh, perpendicular to the, or parallel rather, to the connector. Uh, you don't wanna install it at an angle, but, and then you can see the white wire is our um, connector for, or our wire for the scan lines. Okay, 
And now I think, I think we're good. So let's go ahead and put the battery compartment back in. Now, one thing you want to make sure when you screw any of the screws in that no wires are in the way. Thankfully, there's really nothing to get in the way here, but um, uh, that's always something. Yeah, it's a caution. It's always to be good to be aware of where all your wires are. All right. Looks good. Looks good. That's aligned. Okay. That'd be great. A new shell for the links that'd be really awesome get some colors dude that would be so cool oh i already put a screw there <laughs> okay uh, i was like why is that not going in okay um put that in let's let's give scan lines a try Make sure it turns on, turns on. And uh, he said the backlight button, which is this bottom one here, should activate scan line, activate scan lines. Oh yeah. Oh wait. Oh, oh, that's brightness control, but I guess you have to hold it. Ah, there it goes, scan. So we, I, I can do brightness control using both of these. Oh, that's cool. So these are, these appear to be vertical scan lines. So scan lines off. And then scan lines on. Uh, the Moire is gonna get in the way, but they do look good. You just probably can't see it over YouTube, unfortunately. But very cool. Oh, 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 oh actually, yeah, no, there are other It almost looks like there's scan lines uh, no matter what, but no, I guess that's just the how it looks. Very, guys, I love this. Okay, let me turn it off. Finish things up. Put the grips back on. Now let's see if this will still work when I put the, I mean, it's so weird that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm guessing the battery compartment or something. This, this, this is so hard to put on guys. It, this, this foam is too thick. Oh, that, I didn't even put it on right. Mm. Got to really push it down. There we go. Does it still turn on? See, now it doesn't turn on. What's up with that? Guys, this is like really weird. Ben, have you ever seen an issue like that? where it turns on fine with the battery cover off and then the battery, turning the battery or putting the battery cover on makes it turn off. 
I'm guessing the batteries are getting, like, pushed out of... I mean, I'm, like, moving the batteries here, and it's fine. Weird. You can also see a split starting to form on the on the top piece of the shell. Oh, it's the foam separating the... I mean, that's what I think it is. I um, almost just want to peel it off. Hmm. Well, okay. I mean, I did have some luck with it, you know. Maybe I'll just be careful putting it on. Whew, that is... That is tight. No. Yeah. Act oh, that's what you're talking. Yeah, look, the plastic right here. Got to be careful. Let me see if I keep it on while I do that. Huh, that's kind of funny. So when I keep it on and then put it on, it works. And then if I turn it off, but then it won't turn back on. Dude, that is, I'm at a loss here. Hmm. Yeah, that foam, that foam's gotta go. It's so hard to remove the battery cover. I'm gonna take it out, but I'll give it back to the original owner if they wanna stick it back on. Oh, that's not gonna come off easy. I mean, that's the thing with older electronics. They're, you know, they got their own little quirks. Um, this is kind of an interesting thing. Oh, oh, that, that could be. Yeah, so maybe it's just a good idea to take this. Wow, that would be bad. Actually, didn't someone make a replacement, um, like, uh, for the Atari Lynx, for these buttons, those, um, like that, I don't know how you would call it. It's like a, uh, um, yeah, Atari. Oh, okay. Atari Gamer. Did, did Atari, uh, did Atari Gamer design it? Oh, Retro 6 had them made. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Cause yeah, if they're cracking, then it's good to have replacements. The membrane, that's the word I'm looking for. Thanks, Ben. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't think, uh of the right word. I've seen 3D printed ones in the wild. Oh, the faceplate, okay, that's pretty cool. Guys, I'm doing my best to, I might, I think I have an extra one. This foam feels like ridiculously thick. Hold on one second, guys, I think I have another one. So I do have an extra one, because um, I remember I bought and put the foam is just as thick, if not thicker. And I bought it, because um, I think I bought like three, it came in like, there was a bunch of them, or maybe two. Uh, it was on eBay for a good price, because you know, a lot of times Lynx consoles don't come with these, these get lost. So weird. Wow. I'm gonna peel I'm gonna peel this off just because, you know. It's unfortunate. I hate to do this, but it's why is it not doing that? Wow, 
well. I think it's time for a new membrane. Or maybe it's where it plugs into that you can trim half a millimeter from the end to refresh the connection. Oh. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Let's see if I can just make the foam a little bit thinner using a, a razor blade. I'm not sure this is going to work, but. Let's see if I can just remove just a little bit, relieve some of that pressure. Uh, no, no, that's just too much effort. I'm going to remove the foam. <sighs> Could you use the battery? Could the battery tray be... No, if, if battery tray was out of alignment, I wouldn't be able to put the shell back together. But that's a good, you know... Oh, let's see. That's a good, yeah, let's, let's test it out. Okay, so with that, it still turns on. Let me put more pressure. Ugh, that's a lot of pressure. I'm not even sure if I can replicate it. Still turns on. The battery tray has pins and pegs that let it sit in the shell, so it's, yeah, it's it's definitely aligned. Um, otherwise, yeah, it'd be difficult to put it back together. Hey, back the screw out of the battery tray. A turn. Oh, okay, let's try that. Like a full turn or a half turn? Let's let's see. Should I just do like a half turn maybe? One full turn. Okay, so we're gonna go one full turn. So Okay, one full turn. Let's put the battery back in. Uh, well, the membrane, I don't think, I'm not sure if the membrane crosses. Um, does it cross the, the, the path of that screw? Gosh, that, that is so much pressure. That is so much pressure. Let's see. Nothing. God, it's so hard to. It starts like, like clockwork. The membrane covers the face pretty much. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. I think I'm just going to try and remove this as best as I can. I mean, I, and I hope that solves it. Yeah, no, I don't think it's that. I think I think maybe Ben is on to something. It's, it's something to do with the... Because the interesting thing is when it was on, and then I put the battery cover on, it stayed on. So, but the, you know... I couldn't then turn it back on after that. It's really weird. This is 
mangled. Whatever glue they used is powerful. Wow, that is strong. Let's see. The button contact is not touching the board anymore with the battery. Yeah, I guess so. It's just crazy how much pressure it's putting in order to do that, you know? Pretty nuts. Oh, uh, the dude, I had a question. Will you be keeping any of your live streams? That oh yeah, so um, so Rose personality. I I have a playlist with all of my live streams. They're all in there. It's a uh, it's called live stream archives. Um, I have a lot of playlists, but um, and I I might trim those down a little bit. But yeah, you'll, you can find them there. All, all of my live streams that I've ever done are in there. Almost done. I'm just removing, guys, I'm removing this foam. And it is a chore. Um... Almost got it. And what I might do, ugh, making a mess. All right, so that's that's how it's looking so far, but. Man. Well, let's just give it a let's just give it a test. I mean, hopefully I just didn't do all this for nothing, but let's give it a test real quick. I mean, that goes in so much easier. And what do you what do you know? It works. And it goes in and out so that, like that foam is I get why they do it. It's to kind of I mean this this isn't coming off it clips in um, I mean, I know they do it to keep everything in place and maybe keep it from coming out, but that's almost too much security So I'm gonna call that a win it works unfortunately that rubber um, Or sorry that foam Cushion had to come out. Let me clean up the mess I made And I'm gonna clean that up a little bit later but okay, well we have a successful. Oh, Ben, Ben just checked my links doors here. The aftermarket pack of three I got from you is super the original. Oh, they make aftermarket ones. Yeah, I know. I feel yeah, it's it kind of stinks, but. Um, yeah, I mean, these are, they're firm. The foam is firm. But, but now it just comes on. You just gotta, you gotta clip it out. I mean, it's, it's on there pretty securely. I don't know what the foam is for. It's almost unnecessary. And then you just clip it in. Successful project, y'all. Turn off. All right. Well, does anybody have any questions about the mod, um, or the links, or or anything? Oh, huh. it's not a real mod unless you do it at least once. Well, I kind of uh, you know redid it. I had to open the console back up to do that. Uh, 
to put the scan line wire Try the El Cheapo in it. Oh, so I, um, so Ben, I, I need. I think I need to send this back to you because I think it uh, for some reason. And let's see. I mean, watch it work now. But let's see here. So it's. I, I get this insert game. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what happened, but. Uh, I don't know. It, it definitely worked when I first got it, um, but I know what even. Yeah, it's weird. I, I think maybe like the firmware got erased or something, um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, no, thank you. No, I, and I, I've actually been mean, because we, we spoke about this, I think, a while ago. I've lost the bubble on it. Um, but uh, but yeah. I mean, guys, this is a beautiful, beautiful screen. Probably one of the, probably the best mod you can do to your links. Um, and probably the IPS kit that he had is even better. But this, even this one is just beautiful. I mean, it's so crisp. So crisp. Let's see. But uh, but guys, I mean, if y'all have any questions, we got Ben Ven here, and I'm sure he can answer any of your questions. Of course, I'll try and answer some of your questions too. But um, but let's see. Actually, the one game I really like from California Games is that Surfer one. Let's see. Let's see how I do with that. I'm, I'm watching myself on the. Uh... Uh, uh, okay. There we go. Let's see if we can do a seven or a 360 at least. Oh nope! Wipe out. Okay. Yep. It's hard to play. I'm look, looking at myself. It's a little bit of lag. I, it's probably what it is from looking. I'm looking at my stream. There we go. Three six double three sixty. Wasn't that a double 360? Oh, time's up. Um... Is it me or the screen? Oh no, the screen is certainly not washed. What's probably happening is um, probably the. What, let me see here. I mean, it's that's that's about as sharp as you're gonna get. I mean, I think maybe let me darken a little bit. I mean, it's like pixel perfect. Um, but yeah. So let's see here. Scrapeyard dog or checker flags look great on camera. Hi. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I definitely want to increase my... I mean, get more Lynx games. Actually, the one game... Um, which I really... I remember playing it when I was younger. Because there was a kid. It was funny. Uh, when I was younger, in our, like, after school, I, I had the game... I had a Game Gear. One kid had a Game Boy. And somebody had the Lynx. And I think it was the Model 2. Um, and, I, and he had this one game. I think it was called, like, Slime World or something. Uh, which I thought was really, really cool. And then there's like this other one, which was really hard, like called something beast or the beast or something. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's got an interesting library, you know, totally different from the other, you know, uh, Japanese offerings. Um, this being the only Western one, really. So um, Shadow Beast. Yes, that's the one. That game was hard. You're like running and yeah, that game when I was younger, I could not play. Um, but uh, but yeah, guys, there it is. I mean, it's 8.30. We've been at it for two hours. Um, we got, you know, the, uh, we added the scan line option, um, which I totally forgot about. Um, Atari Gamer releases a homebrew cart every... Oh, yeah, so he sent me one. I haven't gotten it yet. Um, I was hoping to have it by today. It would have been perfect to kind of showcase all those games. But yeah, they still make games for the Atari Lynx, everybody. It's so cool. Um, ah, Garrett, 828. So you are exactly 12 hours... I, I guess maybe... Are you in Australia? Or Garrett Kazuma? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Or New Zealand, maybe? I don't know. Um... Ah, Malaysia, cool. All right. Awesome. Oops. There we go. Um, but yeah, I mean, guys, unless you have any other questions, uh, I think that's about all I got to show. Yeah, I, you know, I apologize to, you know, this, I had a really cool video planned for the, uh, oh, wow, 1.30 a.m., maybe, for Derek in Scotland. Wow, thank you for staying up late to watch the stream. Um, but yep, yep. Um, yeah, and thank you, Ben, for being in the chat. This is great. I, uh, I mean, you helped with the install, you answered questions, really appreciate it. I mean, guys, if you haven't checked out Ben's store, definitely check it out, he's got great mods. You know, kind of one of the pillars in the retro mo handheld modding community. Um, a lot of, I feel like he's done a lot of the firsts, you know, uh, especially with like the Game Boy. Um, but yeah, so definitely, definitely awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, Atari Gamer. Yeah, we're, we're about to wrap things up. Uh, but great kit, great 3D printed bracket Atari Gamer. I mean... I'm just glad that the Lynx, you know, as niche as it is, it still gets still gets some love. So that's always really awesome. And I think it's an underrated console. Uh, I mean, it's just so cool. Look how cool it is. And it's and it's uh, American. So that, that's cool, too, I guess. You know, the other all the pretty much all the other options were Japanese. So this is like your oddball out. Um, but alrighty, guys. Um yeah that's all i got thank you all so much for watching um and i will i mean fingers crossed you know well ne next week is going to be a different video the video i was supposed to do today will probably be two thursdays from now um but next week i got a cool video that i'm excited about so definitely stay tuned and uh and yeah i'll, I'll see you all see you guys all very soon and uh Hey, thanks for subscribing, Flynn. Appreciate the sub. Um, but yeah, that's a long goodbye. I will uh, see you guys later. Take it easy. Any hints on next week's video? Uh, it's, a, it's a Game Boy video. Game Boy Color. And that's all I'll say about that. So, all right, guys. Talk to y'all later. Have a good night. Or morning. <laughs>